So solar is one of the most sustainable and easiest ways to achieve power in any off-grid situation. This being said, not all solar panels are created equally, and I went over this in a previous episode comparing cheap knockoffs to Bluetti branded products. But since that episode, Bluetti have released their new solar panel, the PV200. In today's episode, I'm gonna detail the specifications, the dimensions, I'm going to test this PV200 and compare it side by side with the previous and now superseded SP line to see what, if anything, has improved. The Bluetti PV200 panel comes in at 590 millimeters wide, 630 millimeters long, and 60 millimeters deep in its folded orientation. Placing these onto the scales, we note that it weighs about eight kilos. Now the PV panel shares a lot of similarities with that old SP line, including the way in which it folds and the pocket on the front which contains the cables and plugs. The exterior material on the PV200 is a water resistant, durable material that seems to repel water just a little bit better than the previous SP model. This being said, neither of these panels are waterproof, but they are water resistant, so I'd be comfortable leaving them out in a light shower, but I definitely wouldn't be leaving them out in consistent or heavy rain. Opening up the front pocket gives us access to these wide connections, being a three meter, 12 gauge wire that is sealed directly into the panels. On the other end, we have the industry standard MC4 connectors. Just as before, the technical specifications are printed within this pocket, which comes in very handy when transferring these panels and using them with different devices. Although the design is very similar, the clips and the legs on this PV200 model do differ slightly. The clips have now been relocated to the side, but we still retain a push button release. As we open them up, we also note that the legs now have several press studs that support leg straps at different lengths. This gives us the ability to adjust the legs and support the panel at various angles to best optimize solar input at different times during the day. Now this is great, but we have lost that super helpful elastic strap that used to pull the legs back towards the panel on fold up as we saw with the previous SP models. Once we open the panels up, we can see the four individual 50 watt panels extend to about 2.265 meters long. We can also observe the ETFE coating on the panel, which is what we've come to expect with these high quality units. The ETFE coating provides a very durable UV resistant protection that not only lasts for a long time, but also helps with the efficiency of the solar cells themselves. Placing the PV200 side by side with the SP200, we can see a very different looking panel. However, a very similar overall dimension. Now the new PV units do have slightly different technical data and something we'll be testing later on. Looking at the technical specifications on this panel and we note the maximum power of 9.7 amp is achieved at 20.5 volt and the open circuit voltage is 26.1. When comparing this to the previous SP model, which achieves a maximum power of 10 amp at 20 volt and an open circuit of 24, we can see they are very similar. Now the biggest difference with this new PV panel is the way in which those four individual panels are wired together. The PV is said to be wired in a parallel combination as opposed to the SP, which is in a series. Now generally, series connections are more efficient. However, when you have a partial obstruction or shade from a nearby tree, you lose a lot of that efficiency and a lot of the power coming from the panels. Theoretically, this PV unit should be much better at dealing with those situations. But rather than standing around here talking about them, let's head out bush and see how they perform. Well, here we are on another perfect day in the south of WA where the conditions are quite favorable for conducting some solar tests. As mentioned, we're going to be conducting a side-by-side -side comparison with Blue Eddy's older SP200 panel. As seen here, they both set up in a very similar time. Now with these panels set up, we can see one of the advantages of these new PV panels, and that is the ability to lay them a little bit flatter with the adjustable legs. We'll soon find out whether or not that makes much of a difference. The first thing I'm gonna do is measure the voltage of both of these panels. The new PV panels sit at about 24.1 volt, and the older SP models, 24.07. So very little change there. 
So today we're going to conduct a series of tests, but the first one we're going to do is just to see the total power output these panels can produce by plugging them into this Blue Eddy EB3A power station. The EB3A can accept up to a maximum of 200 watt of solar between the voltages of 12 and 28 volt. Starting with the new PV unit, and we're averaging about 145 watts of input. Not too bad given the current conditions. Swapping the PV panel for the older SP unit, and again we're seeing about 146 watts of input. So the results are about as close as identical as we're going to get, and you'd expect that as they're both 200 watt rated panels. So let's move on. Now just to make sure that these Bluetti solar panels aren't optimised for charging with Bluetti power stations, I'm going to plug them into the Land Cruiser's Red Arc BCDC 1240D battery charger to charge up the auxiliary battery in my vehicle. Now just quickly before we do, I want to mention that I get a lot of feedback from my Australian viewers regarding the lack of Anderson plugs on the solar panels and the power stations. Now for solar panels, MC4 connectors as supplied with the Bluetti units are the industry standard and there's a good reason for it. The MC4 connectors can be used with any adapters to plug into any appliance, but more importantly, they can be used to wire in parallel or series with other, other panels, which you just simply can't do with Anderson plugs. Now the odds are that if you're using these Blue Eddy solar panels, you're probably going to be placing them away from your vehicle or a portable power station, and the three meter cables that come with the unit aren't going to be enough. So you can just do what I've done and build your own extension cable using MC4 connectors at one end and an Anderson plug to suit your needs at the other. This one here is only 5 metres, but it gives me the ability to place those solar panels in the best condition around my vehicle. Now before we start plugging these panels into the vehicle, I'll note that we're using a Victron BMV712 battery monitor to view the results today, and we're going to be using the app on the smartphone. It should also be noted that we do have a small negative draw of about 3 watts, which will have to be added to the final results to give us an accurate reading. Plugging in the PV200 panels and it does take some time for the Red Arc to process and slowly administer that charge. We eventually stabilise at about 148 watts at 11.1 .1 amps at 12 volts. Conducting the same test again with the SP200s and we see the Red Arc again slowly increase to 136 watts at about 10.2 amps at 12 volts. Just remember, when plugging in solar panels into any battery charger in your vehicle, just make sure they're going to comply with the battery charger's voltage range. So for example, the Red Arc BC-DC 1240 charger that I'm using today can accept solar from anywhere between 17.5 to 35 volt. So with these panels today being 24.1 and 24.07 volts respectively, we're going to have no problems. The other thing to note is that you can always overload the wattage, but you cannot overload that voltage. So plugging in any more than 35 watt into this Red Arc will not administer any charge. But we can plug in more than its 600 watt rated power input. So if we wire in many panels into parallel together, it will be fine. And wiring more than 600 watt will actually provide an advantage as you're going to maximize the solar input that you can achieve throughout the course of an entire day, particularly at those low light conditions. So the results from these tests are almost identical, again, as we'd expect to see from these 200 watt panels. The next test I'm going to conduct is a partial shade or coverage test on these two panels, and this is where I expect to see the biggest difference. When you're out camping, unless you're camping out in a very wide open area or constantly moving your panels around, it's only a matter of time before shade from the trees or other obstructions cover part of your panel. And I want to see what effect this has and the differences between the SP models and these newer PV ones. So moving the PV panel into a more optimal position, facing directly into the sun, we plug it into the Red Arc charger on the vehicle. At full exposure, the PV panel still brings in 148 watts, which is equivalent to 74% efficiency. But as it happens in reality, we're likely to see some sort of shade or partial obstruction over these panels. So I'm going to use a towel to represent that obstruction. Placing a towel over just a single panel representing one quarter of the total array, we see that input drop from 144 watt to 103 watt, an efficiency drop of 23%. Further, if we cover 50% of this array, we now see that input drop to only 67 watt, representing another 18% drop in efficiency. Just for fun, if we cover the vast majority of the panel with the towel, we drop down to about 35 watt, a further drop in efficiency of 16%. This confirms that this PV panel here is almost definitely wired in a parallel connection. And that means that all the positive leads from each of these four individual panels are wired together. And each of the four negative leads are also wired together. And each of those groups of wires terminate in the MC4 connector. 
This also means that it keeps the voltage at the nominal voltage of each panel, indicating that each of these panels are outputting 24 volt. Moving on to the older SP panels, again we are now seeing a total of 136 watts of input with the panel completely uncovered, representing a 68% efficiency. Covering a single panel in the array or a quarter of the total output, we see that power drops to 3 watts or only 1% efficiency. The power input remains at this level regardless of whether we cover one single panel or almost 3 quarters of the panel. We remain at 1% efficiency. So what this means is that this SP unit here is wired in series together, which means that the negative lead from this panel is wired to the positive of this, the negative from this one to the positive of this one, and so on. And what this results in is a positive lead at one end and a negative lead at the other, which then terminate into those MC4 connectors. What this also does is combines the voltage of each panel, indicating that each of these four individual panels are outputting about six volts. So there we have it. Now, although we've seen a power drop in both of these units when suffering from partial coverage, we do note that the PV unit is able to much more efficiently retain the power gained from the remaining panels a lot better than that of the SP unit. So that's simply because the PV unit is wired in parallel and the SP in series. What we've also gathered from today's testing is that if you already have some of the SP panels, it's probably not worth upgrading or selling these to purchase the PV. In ideal conditions, when fully exposed to sunlight, we see that these panels bring in almost identical figures. So there you have it guys, that is my review of the Bluetti PV 200W solar panels and how they differ and have improved since the release of the older SP models. Bluetti no longer sell these SP models and it's all in the PV range and I think that's for good reason. I can confidently say that after years of using Bluetti products and specifically those SP 200 watt solar panels that they are still some of the highest quality and highest efficiency panels on the market. Not only do they provide some impressive power outputs but their slim dimensions also mean they can be packed away nice and tightly and easily when camping with limited space. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you some ideas to consider in regards to choosing solar panels and whether or not either of these particular units would suit your setup. Thanks for watching to the end, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.